Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is senior editor Dan Alexander. Dan, thank you for coming on today. Sure thing. Thank you for having me. You just had a bombshell report about Donald Trump that he's been lying about Trump Tower for decades. Can you give us an overview? Yeah, so basically uh, Trump Tower has been a place of myth making since it opened in 1983, starting with Trump saying that he had sold more of the condos for higher prices than he actually did, continuing through the years saying that it was more profitable than it actually was, that it was more valuable than it actually was. Uh, it looks like he was lying about the square footage, not only of his penthouse, which we had reported previously, but also of the size of the commercial space downstairs, which is new. So there are all these sort of elements that show that over the years, Donald Trump has lied about his most famous building. And why this all really matters is that right now there are two separate cases, one a $250 million civil suit against the Trump organization for doing things like this, for lying about the value of its assets. And the second, a criminal investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney. Now that investigation was famously kind of put on ice, but we don't know whether it's going to come back and whether those prosecutors are looking for more information to perhaps revive it. Uh, if they are, this story provides some of it. Why is he so obsessed about lying about square footage size? You, um, Forbes recently reported back in September, I believe, of 2022, that he lied about the square footage of his penthouse. So what is the point of lying about the size? Donald Trump, everything's got to be bigger. It's got to be more valuable. It's got to be more impressive. Uh, you know, Trump Tower, the top floor is floor number 68. Uh, that's because he skipped about 10 floors down below to make it look like it was 10 stories higher than it was. It's consistent across everything that he does, whether it's square feet, whether it's number of stories in a building, whether it's the size of his fortune. In this case, a lot of times you value assets of real estate based on their square footage. And so if you can convince somebody that it has more square feet than it actually does, then you can also convince them that it's more valuable than it actually is. That being able to act like your assets are more valuable than they actually are has business consequences. To banks, insurers, you look more credit worthy. And that can be a good thing for somebody in Donald Trump's position. How did lenders then get duped for years? Because it seems like this has been a well-known secret. You talked to a construction manager at Trump Tower who said, quote, it didn't seem like he had the kind of money he claimed he had. So was this a well-known secret? Well, this is an example you know, a, a set of lies looking at one property, but his lies about the value of his property and the characteristics of his properties extend well beyond Trump Tower and well beyond the few years that prosecutors are looking at. Uh, so, yes, it was a secret. This aspect of it was a secret, but everyone has long known that Donald Trump lies about his assets. I think that one of the key points here is that Although you can know that he lies about his assets, you can still be surprised by the extent to which he lies about his assets. So for instance, if he says that he's worth $10 billion and you go and you scrub the numbers and you conclude, no, 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 he is way making this up. He's actually only worth $5 billion. You're probably going to pat yourself on the back and think, wow, I really did a good job there calling him out on that. But what you might not understand is that he's not worth $5 billion. He could be worth $2 billion. And so you might be congratulating yourself for having scrutinized him so much while simultaneously attributing an additional $3 billion to him. And I think that that ultimately is what the question is with the banks. Yes, they saw through his lies, like everybody did. Did they see through all of his lies? And it's becoming clearer and clearer that like everyone else, no, they did not. They were fooled by some things and trusted him on some things too much. So how were lenders duped for decades? So a lot of times in the business world, you're relying on people to be truthful. Uh, that's why it's a crime to create false business records. So whether it's, for example, a borrower saying, here's how many square feet are in my building, or here's what the occupancy is in my building. You know, lenders, yes, they do due diligence. But due diligence is supposed to catch a few things if there are things, but ultimately you're, you're supposed to be able to trust the person who you're giving money. You're not expected to have to track down every last 
square foot, every last occupancy percentage in every single property to determine whether or not they are true or whether or not they are lies. I do want to get into the nitty gritty here of your reporting, and you uncovered a disparity over how vacant space was treated in the Trump Tower. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So if you look at the Trump Organization's property tax appeals, uh, you can see that they said that there was about 234,000 square feet in the commercial section of Trump Tower. If you then look at the lending documents, uh, those say that there's about 244,000 square feet. So there's a, a slight discrepancy there, which is interesting. But perhaps more interesting is the fact that in the tax documents, it says that a significant percentage of that building is vacant. So it could be 10%, 11%, 15%, 20%, depending on the year, is vacant. If you then go over to the lending documents, it says that almost nothing is vacant, uh, that there's 99% occupancy one year, 99% occupancy another year. And so you've got this situation where when talking to the tax authorities, the Trump organization is saying, hey, there's a big hole in this building that we haven't filled. When talking to their lenders, they're saying this building is packed to the brim. Talking to Forbes reporters about Trump and his taxes over the past year, a word that has come up is that he's creative. He's extremely creative with his taxes. Is this a case of being creative with some vacant space or is this purely illegal? These are lies. Um, saying that somebody is being creative is itself sometimes a creative way of kind of hedging your bets. If you look at the Trump Organization's behavior and the number of inconsistencies over the years, it's impossible to conclude that these are anything but lies. We have them in their documents saying that there is a certain amount of square footage in one place and a different amount of square footage in another place and a different amount of square footage in a different place. It's also consistent with other previous lies that we've seen. Not only were they lying it seems about the space at the bottom of Trump Tower, but we know that they were lying about the size of the space in the penthouse of Trump Tower. That's one that they've already admitted to. So I don't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them too much credit here. It's not that creative to say that your building is a different size than it is. It's just a lie. You're saying it's a lie in no uncertain terms. I want to quote you from your reporting. You said there is no doubt that Donald Trump is behind all this. How are you certain of that? Well, if you look at the documents, uh, for example, on one of his statements, well, on most of his statements of financial condition, but one of the ones that we're focused on here, it says explicitly that these valuations were the creation of Donald Trump in uh, working with his associates and other partners. If you look at the documents, he has signed documents in his own hand saying what the square footage is of certain parts of this building. And then in other instances, the Trump organization is submitting different information. If you listen to his own voice, he's spoken to Forbes and has said numbers that are wildly different than not only what the, the original documents say, but even that are more aggressive than what the puffed up documents say. And so not all of these things can be true at once. And he clearly is participating in this ruse to convince everybody that is that his properties are more valuable than they actually are. I want to talk about how big of a deal this is. There have been legal troubles swirling around Donald Trump, multiple investigations, lawsuits since he left office. And how big of a deal is this one? Well, overall, his problems with uh, manipulating the value of assets are a huge deal for him. He's facing a lawsuit for a quarter of a billion dollars. That's real money for Donald Trump. It's real money for anybody, but it's even real money for Donald Trump. Uh, he doesn't have the amount of cash to be able to give out a quarter of a billion dollars and not think about it. it that would put a real dent in his business. Uh, in addition, you know, there's a potential criminal case to be made here. And one that, if you believe uh, one of the prosecutors who recently left the district attorney's office, that they were prepared to charge Trump on uh, until the new district attorney came into office. The new district attorney, attorney says that they're continuing to investigate. So they still could theoretically file criminal charges against Trump. That obviously would be devastating both for his legacy, but also for his 2024 presidential campaign. So all of this stuff 
is a huge deal for Donald Trump. And this particular story highlights aspects of it that haven't come out before. But the, the, bigger, the bigger impact is sort of the, the, when you add all of it up together, both this new evidence, but also the mass of documents that prosecutors and the attorney general's office have already assembled. So could he face jail time? You know, we'll see. I mean, first question is, is he going to face criminal charges? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if he were to face criminal charges and he were to be convicted, depending on what those charges are, sure. Um, but Donald Trump has for decades uh, employed aggressive lawyers and aggressive legal strategies. Uh, and I think in this case, you know, the fact that they haven't already filed criminal charges against him suggests that it might be one more instance in which he basically is able to lie and get away with it. But ultimately, time will tell. And you said that this does have the potential to impact his 2024 aspirations. Do you think this could be the lethal nail in the coffin to his presidential run? You know, people have been calling nail in the coffins for Trump about every controversy that's come up over the last who knows how many years. This guy doesn't go away. Uh, and I don't think that he would even if he were facing criminal charges. Um, Ultimately, if you you know step down the list of hypotheticals, yeah, it could be a big problem for him and for his presidential campaign. Does that mean that it does political damage? Does that mean that he's sitting in jail? You know, you can come up with a lot of different possibilities, um, but he's not going to go away. And you know, a simple controversy at this stage, it's way too early to be saying, "Oh, this is you know the end of his campaign" or anything like that. Well, Dan Alexander, thank you so much for your reporting. Thank you.